We are back with our first full set review in quite a while. These take us a while to make, and I just haven't been home that much in the last few months. But I am so happy that our first set back is Spelljammer. And many thanks to WizKids for sending it to us to review. I just freaking love the off the wall, irreverent tone of Spelljammer. For those of you curious, here are my takes on Spelljammer for 5e. I really dig the adventure, Lights of Xerixis. My review is up there in the corner. It is lighthearted and it gives you a pretty good taste of the different parts of the Spelljammer setting. I like the framing of the campaign as this take on the mid-century sci-fi serials like Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon. It makes running the campaign easier for the GM because everything is divided into these like distinct sessions with great cliffhangers at the end to make it more exciting. And the adventure is well written, it has great NPC companions, and some really fun moments. I had a few criticisms, but you can see those in my review up there. There's a couple of things I would change up. The Astral Adventurer's Guide, I wasn't really a fan of. The lore is lacking, the mechanics are lacking, it just isn't enough. D&D is just so stingy with the lore these days, and I don't understand why. Instead of three 64-page books, I would have loved to have seen like a full level 1 to 12 adventure and a full setting guide like Theros and Ravnica. They have the resources to do it. They have the money and the writers to make full books. Look how many Paizo books, hopefully you can see them behind me, they put out in a year, and that's for two games, for Pathfinder and Starfinder. I'm just afraid that this is all the official content we're going to get for Spelljammer. I will point to some additional Spelljammer adventures, official and otherwise, at the end of this video if you are like me and you're itching for more wacky Spelljammer content. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. We've got a few sponsors for this longer video, starting with these boxes here from Dragon Shield, the maker of S-tier card sleeves. They branched out into the TTRPG world with these awesome all-in-one storage solutions for game masters and players. The player box has room for your rule books, your dice, your minis, and your character sheets. When you arrive at the game table, unfold it and you have a rolling tray, an erasable cover for that character sheet, and even a place to store your tablet or phone. And the Game Master box has room for books, your laptop, and tons of minis with lots of foam to keep everything protected. You can unfold it into a rolling tray and take off the cover to use it as a DM screen. If you have ever Game Mastered outside of your house, this is the best carrying solution that I have seen. You can see a full rundown of it in our interview at Gen Con, which is up there in the corner of your screen up there, and we'll have a dedicated video review here soon. In the meantime, check out the Player Companion and the Game Master Companion from Dragon Shield at at your local game store or at the link below the video here. And thank you to Dragon Show for making this video possible. I just want to show you inside this Game Master box right here. So here's my DM screen and character sheet. Inside I've got all the Spelljammer books. You're not supposed to open it sideways. Plus all my minis and dice and everything else in there that I need to run a game is fantastic. But now let's go on and talk about our Spelljammer minis. We're starting off with an Astral Elf, which feels appropriate. Astral Elves are one of the new playable races in Spelljammer. They're basically super long-lived space elves with twinkly eyes. We'll talk more about them in a little bit. This mini gives me vibes of Tali from Mass Effect. And if this mini isn't being used as a PC in your adventure, it can also be used for one of the five new Astral Elf stat blocks in Boo's Astral Menagerie, including the CR5 Honor Guard or the CR3 Warrior. The Rhaegar are cephalopods who have evolved into a humanoid shape, so octopus folk. They can change the color of their skin and have bioluminescent freckles. They also have a halo of energy that surrounds them and keeps them safe. They manage to destroy their own homeworld in an event called the Master Stroke, which makes sense when you learn that the Rhaegar consider themselves masterful artists, and the medium of choice is cataclysmic war. They each possess a magical piece of jewelry called a Talarith, and they have a CR of 8. The Auto Gnomes are another playable race in Spelljammer, little sentient androids created by rock gnomes and powered by magic, or sometimes stardust, or clockwork, or, like me, caffeine. They have their own version of Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics. One, defend gnomes who are being attacked by non-gnomes. Two, defend yourself if you are attacked. And three, protect infants and youngsters from harm. 
Now, that third one could cause you some trouble. For example, when your adventuring party is attacking that white dragon wormling, well, it's possible that your auto gnome might switch sides. Though those laws are not mentioned in the race rules, only in the NPC rules. As an NPC, they have a CR of two. These are tiny elemental spirits that live in nature far from civilization. They shun most other living beings, but they do find the trappings of humanoid civilization fascinating. And they'll often follow folks around if they cross their paths. And if it likes what it sees, it might just lend a hand if the humanoid needs it by casting a cantrip or giving the person a little magical present before running off. Keep in mind, though, that they have no names and they are not able to speak. You might find them in wild space riding around on space guppies. They also show up in Rhyme of the Frostmaiden and Tomb of Annihilation, though unfortunately not on Space Guppies. They have a CR of zero. Doars, or as I call them, space penguins, are profit-seeking merchants often found in dark alleys on backwater planets and wild space. They tend to communicate via telepathy, where two doars connect with each other and then to a third party. All their gods deal with commerce and wealth, including Joaquin, so basically they're Ferengi. They also have a CR of zero. There is a Doar promo pack that we reviewed in the video up there in the eye in the corner of your screen. This is where some of my frustration with the Spelljammer books and D&D in general comes in. Literally all we're told about this race, the Surin, is that they're lizard folk who have adapted to life in arid climates and in wild space. And that's it. Now you can go back and find information about them in older editions if you want. They're tied closely to the Dark Sun campaign setting, but having more lore than one sentence would have been nice for 5e. There are two stat blocks, the CR one half Surin Poisoner and the CR3 Surin Defiler. They were not technically made playable in Spelljammer books, but you can just use Lizard Folk rules if you like. So yeah, here is the Hadozi Fighter. Now, there was some controversy over the uncomfortable design decisions when it came to the look of the Hadozi and their accompanying lore. Wizards of the Coast ended up removing some of that lore and the Hadozi art from the D&D Beyond website and presumably from future printings of the books, though the minis will still be included in this set per WizKids. Hadozi are a playable race in Spelljammer, and there are three NPC stat blocks for them, a Hadozi warrior, explorer, and shipmate. These little CR1 guys can attach to spell jamming ships and eventually puncture their way inside. A mated pair produce 1d6 spores every month, so if they go unnoticed on a ship, you could end up with quite an infestation. They feed off the magic from a spell jamming helm. Now, removing them is a little bit tricky because if you kill one, it'll cause a feedback discharge into whoever is manning the spell jamming helm on the ship. So these could pose a fun challenge for a party trying to find a way to get them off the ship without necessarily killing them. Apparently, when you mix an earth elemental with a fire elemental and sprinkle a little arcane dust on top, you might get a murder comet. Now, on its own, it'll just fly around wild space looking for things to destroy, but a murder comet's creator can also bind their own spirit to the comet, becoming ageless and immortal, free from needs like air and sleep and sustenance or social media engagement. They have a CR5 stat block. Oh man, I really like this mini. Plasmoids are intelligent oozes, essentially. Those little designs on this body are nerves. They are playable in Spelljammer with the ability to shift through very tight spaces like oozes or turn into a blob like me on a Friday afternoon. Again, the lore in the book is really lacking. We get information about how the plasmoids eat and reproduce and manipulate objects, but hardly anything about their culture or society or history. There's also a few plasmoid stat blocks, including the CR3 Warrior and the CR1 Quarter Explorer, whose art inspired this many. I actually quite like this mini as well. While the paint job is really simple, I think it works for this mini. This is our Thrycreen, another playable race. Again, the Spelljammer books are pretty light on lore, but you can learn more about them in the Monster Manual. They have the ability to camouflage their coloring as an action, giving you advantage on your stealth checks, and they can communicate telepathically with any creature that has a language, both of which are potentially powerful abilities. There are also a number of Thrycreen stat blocks, like the CR2 Hunter and the CR7 Gladiator. 
Good old Mr. Flinch is a Hadozi explorer who you'll meet in the Spelljammer adventure. He serves as the first mate on the Second Wind Spelljammer ship under Commodore Crux, and this is a ship that you may spend a good deal of time on in the adventure. He could also end up being a companion for the characters for most of the adventure. Of course, you can also use this mini here for a Hadozi player character if you prefer. In the Spelljammer adventure, Light of Xeraxis, an attack occurs that brings forth a lot of deadly vines from the ground. I don't want to spoil anything beyond that, but some of those vines manifest as these astral blights. These plant creatures can grapple foes with their attacks, which also deals radiant damage, and then drain the heat from their targets, dealing cold damage. They have blind sight, but also generate their own weak light, so at least they probably won't catch you unaware. They have a CR1 stat block. One of the hardest parts about being a game master for many of us is making our descriptions of locations and characters and dialogue and just moments in our games feel epic and cinematic. We are not all professional writers and improv stars, but those descriptions can make or break the tension and drama in our games. That's where our next sponsor comes in, Describe. Describe is a website that features professionally written box text for hundreds of locations and monsters and spells and magic items and more. They even have battle maps that include professionally written descriptions for the locations on the map. At certain tiers, you can even submit your own character, your own pivotal moment in your campaign, or more for them to be written by professional writers. Our games are all about what's set at the table, so get some experts to help make your game the best it can be. You can sign up for a monthly membership, but you can save a bunch of money by signing up annually. And if you use our link below the video or the coupon code Gallant Goblin, all one word. You can save an additional 10% on your first subscription payment. It also works for the annual subscriptions. Check out Describe and all it has to offer at the link below the video. And don't forget to use that code Gallant Goblin for that discount. You can get some awesome resources for your game and you help support your favorite little goblins. Now let's go and look at our uncommon minis. Captain Fel Audra seems to be channeling some Captain Mal from Firefly Energy. She's a capable spelljammer for hire who has turned to smuggling to pay off her considerable debts, namely an infernal contract that she entered into many years previously. She is currently leasing Crux's ship, which he now needs to help the PCs with their mission, so some negotiations are in order. She uses the CR2 cult fanatic stat block from the basic rules. A long time ago, a group of elves traveled from the Feywild into the Astral Plane to become closer to their gods. Since nothing ages on the Astral Plane, many Astral Elves are extremely long-lived, which can have a profound impact on their personalities. Many become melancholic and stoic. Some see a lack of meaning in the transient lives of other races. A few become hedonistic and seek to have experience throughout the reaches of the multiverse. Astral Elves are again playable in Spelljammer. If you are playing an Astral Elf, be sure you check out Boo's Astral Menagerie, which has more lore for the Astral Elves than the player option book has. The Naogi have a very special place in my heart because they feature heavily in my first adventure, I Am Your World, which, as I mentioned, is a great jumping off point for a Spelljammer adventure. Naogi travel the universe conquering and enslaving weaker societies. One of their early conquests was the Umber Hulks, who they forced into servitude to build their spidery spaceships and to be the muscle in their thuggish operations. The CR4 Naogi Master stat block appears in Volo's Guide and was updated for Monsters of the Multiverse. Spelljammer introduced three new Naogi stat blocks. Here's what I'm talking about. A Chewinga on a three-eyed space guppy mini. There's something about this mini that makes it look like a piece of abstract art. The Space Guppy does have its own CR0 stat block that you can use with the mounted combat rules. And it's not just the Chewinga that are known to ride them. You might also find sprites and other tiny creatures, or little fey creatures, hitching a ride from time to time. Speaking of mounted combat, here is a penguin riding on a flying pig. I cannot imagine how many hallucinogens were used in the creation of this campaign setting, but I'm here for it. We definitely need more Spelljammer adventures. The Space Swine here also has its own CR1 quarter stat block. These winged boars are bred by the Dowars to be used as mounts, beasts of burden, trackers, truffle hunters, and according to the book, roasted snacks served with applesauce. 
Fears are large, tentacled aberrations who eat nightmares. They're not big on direct combat, and they have the ability to turn invisible, so they'll typically hide away until their victim goes to bed. And then they'll feed, doing 5d10 psychic damage and gaining that many temporary hit points. It is a CR5 creature, so if it corners a victim and gets to jump on them, it could go very poorly for that poor sap. Here is the uncommon version of our auto gnome holding a little crystal ball. While the focus in this set is on them as a playable race, they have a pretty fun NPC stat block that includes a number of malfunctions that might occur if it takes 15 points or more of damage from a single source. Parts of it might fall off, or it might just explode in your face. It only has 39 hit points, so you may not see these malfunctions too often, but they are a fun little diversion in combat. And here is Commodore Crux himself. This is perhaps the most important NPC in the Spelljammer adventure, so you're gonna want a mini to represent him. Now first, let's acknowledge that this mini is amazing. All gift minis are amazing, and I want a gift warband set, please, WizKids. Now, you may notice that he is missing the absolute star of the show, the parrot that appears in his artwork. But that is for a good reason. It is not his parrot. It belongs to Large Luigi, the beholder proprietor of the Rock of Brawl Tavern, called the Happy Beholder. Have I mentioned how much I love this setting? I am just upset we did not get a mini of Large Luigi and his parrot. Crux uses the CR3 GIF Shipmate stat block. If you're looking for a D&D creature that falls right in the middle of that spectrum from horrifying to hysterical, I nominate the Sirlon here to fill that role. These long-lived pompous worm jerks live in the astral plane, but journey to the material plane every seven years to feast on people, primarily humans and halflings. They often work with mind flayers, letting them eat the brains while the Sirlon eat everything else. You do have to admire their commitment to not letting food go to waste. They have a CR of two with some spell casting abilities. This floating piece of obsidian is called a Zodar. It's another one of those creatures that doesn't get a lot of real lore in the books, but a lot of conjecture. Some people think that they were created by a forgotten god, etc., etc. So it's going to be really incumbent upon you as a GM to provide a background for these creatures. It does have weird abilities. It can only speak three times in its life. It can forcefully teleport other creatures. And it can cast the wish spell once, but in doing so it turns to dust. A Zodar does have a pivotal role in the Spelljammer adventure, so you're probably going to want to pick up one of these minis for that. This also reminds me of a character in Hank Green's book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. That's a good book. It has a CR of 16. And here is the very important spell jamming helm itself. We don't typically get a lot of scattered terrain in our Icons of the Realms boxes, but these chairs are vital to controlling the spaceships in which you'll be traveling. And I can certainly see scenarios in which a fight will break out on a bridge of a ship over control of the spell jamming helm. And if you're thinking, why is the spell jamming helm a chair and not a thing you wear on your head? Think about the helm of a ship and not the piece of armor. The Astral Elf Aristocrat is one of the five new Astral Elf stat blocks in the Spelljammer books. The Aristocrat, it's a fun word, is a wizard with access to a handful of spells, including fly, mislead, and sending. They can also summon a solar dragon once per day, and can send out a beam of radiant energy from their hand like Iron Man three times a day. This Astral Elf looks less than pleased with you, though. These warmongering starfish ferns can be found throughout Wild Space after having their own home destroyed by the Beholders. They attack by shooting out a large gray tongue and then dragging their food, i.e. people, back to themselves so they can batter it to death with their branches before eating it. The Elders are large in size and have some psionic spell casting abilities, and they have a CR of 3. Note that this mini is a little bit mixed up. It seems to be based on the artwork for the Artuk Warrior, which is a medium-sized creature with a CR of 2, though it is labeled as an Artuk Elder. There's also an Artuk Priest stat block that has a CR of 2 and is a medium size. I just say to use this for all three stat blocks. It's not like we have a bunch of Artuk minis lying around to choose from. I think this is one of the signature minis from this set, and if there's anything here that you're going to want to throw at your players, it is probably this fellow. These Beholder asteroids fly around wild space, looking like just a regular old rock, until they sense someone nearby and then open their scary, scary eye to attack. It doesn't have the scary, scary eye beams and the anti-magic ray of the Beholder, but it can eat people, 
and magic doesn't work inside their very acidic gullets. They have a CR of 10. Any Mind Flayer Mini is going to be popular on the aftermarket, and this is a pretty great looking Ulatharid. Ulatharids sometimes develop naturally from a Mind Flayer tadpole. They're bigger, more potent Mind Flayers. Elder Brains usually recognize their innate power and give them a higher station in their colony, though sometimes the Elder Brains will see them as a potential threat. And sometimes the Ulatharids will break away from the colony with a small cadre of Mind Flayers and found a new colony, with the Ulatharid eventually becoming the new Elder Brain. They have a CR9 stat block in Monsters of the Multiverse. These anti-EU giant Ken roam the universe looking for... Oh, wait, hold on a second. Let me check my notes. Um, ah, okay. People to eat. They have psionic abilities, including the ability to throw up a psionic shield to block magic missiles. And like most giants, they also have the ability to beat people to death with blunt objects. As a last resort, it might spit acid at you, but it doesn't like to do that because it ruins its hard-fought-for meal. They have a CR of 9. Okay, these large-sized insectile hunters tend to live in sand-covered or rocky environments where they like to, um, hold on, oh yeah, eat people. They are fairly intelligent and can read people's thoughts if they wrap their little antennae around their heads, but they can't speak, so it seems like an ability of dubious utility. One ability that is useful is being able to paralyze creatures from 60 feet away just by looking at them. It has a CR of 4. Every sci-fi fantasy setting needs a creature who pops up around the multiverse, selling stuff from their overcoats, and Spelljammer has the aptly named Mercane. They'll do business with just about anyone, but if you end up on their blacklist, all the other Mercane in the multiverse will know and you'll be cut off. The Mercane have a CR5 stat block, and they're a good source for Spelljamming Helms if you're in the market. Aha, we are breaking the cycle here. These bedbug-looking nightmares don't eat people. They only eat people's brains. They are spawned in the Far Realm and travel to the brain-abundant material plane to kill people, slice open their noggin with their little pinchers, and then swallow their brains whole. I mean, if you're gonna go to the trouble, at least take a moment to enjoy the taste, am I right? It can store up to 12 brains this way before feeling an undeniable urge to take an Uber back home to the Far Realm to put its many feet up and relax. We've all been there. They have a CR of four. These evil looking space sharks will fly around wild space and, uh, well, eat people. Though they will sometimes just sail in the wake of a larger creature or a ship and eat whatever leftovers end up floating by. It can swallow one creature at a time and it has the typical rules for acid damage and upchucking if dealt enough damage in a single turn. It can cause fear if it targets you with this one central eye. The Void Scaver has a CR of 11. Here's a classic creature that we don't have enough minis for, the Umber Hulk, the abominable horror that does all the manual labor in the universe that no one else wants to do. They can be tricky to avoid because they can tunnel through rock faster than I can tunnel my way through a pile of mashed potatoes, and they have the ability to scramble the minds of folks they encounter. These large sized monstrosities have a CR of 5 in the Monster Manual. As we move on to our rare minis, do not forget to sign up for the Big Bad series from our bestest friends in the world, Hit Point Press. By subscribing, you can get actual printed booklets to keep on your game room shelves. Each one is an adventure to run by one of the best writers in the business, fully illustrated with printable reference cards and even a printable mini. It is low-key one of the best deals in gaming. This month, come meet Paragon the Weathermaker. Paragon Fairweather was once a small-time con artist with a minor natural talent for magic. Magic. Alongside her cloudy companion, Mimbus, Paragon terrorizes town after town from her castle in the clouds, sending her eagle knave to collect ransoms from the townsfolk. Will you ground Paragon and her Mimbus in time, or will the Weathermaker cloud your judgment? Find out today at BigBaz.com or use the link below the video to let them know we sent you. Here's where we have our other mini of Prince Zeleth. If you haven't seen my review of the Adult Solar Dragon premium figure featuring Prince Zeleth as the Dragon Rider, check it out in the eye in the corner of your screen there. Prince Zeleth is an astral elf and an important character in the Spelljammer adventure. The two Prince Zeleth minis are pretty similar, though of course this one doesn't feature the modular design that lets it ride on the Solar Dragon. He uses a slightly altered astral elf aristocrat stat block. 
The prince's sister is Princess Zadali, also an important figure in the Spelljammer adventure and a possible PC mini for players who want to be an astral elf. She uses the same astral elf aristocrat stat block. I do like the design of the astral elves here, and that little space helmet is pretty nifty, all things considered. Although it does make me miss the space goblins from Starfinder, though. We need more minis of those. All right, here's everybody's favorite, the Pirate Flump Flapjack. Flapjack is the Spelljammer aboard the Moon Dancer, one of the early ships that you'll find yourself on in Act 1 of the adventure. He'll also be the one to teach your spellcasters how to spell jam if they decide to take the pilot's chair themselves at some point. Flapjack will be making an appearance in all of my adventures from now on, no matter what. He uses a slightly modified CR18 Flump stat block. Seriously, I will buy an entire set of just GIF minis. I'm going to take this moment to complain about D&D Beyond's search function, which is getting really close to useless at this point. If you type Warwick or Blastemoth, also great name by the way, into D&D Beyond, you get no results. <sighs> Blastemoth is Crux's old war buddy and a key character in Act 3 of the adventure. It's a good thing I knew that because the search wasn't going to tell me. Also, I just want to use this mini for my next character, basing him on all those old Adventurers Guild members from all those old adventure movies. He uses a CR3 GIF shipmate stat block. Hastane is a Rhaegar, which is essentially a humanoid celestial octopus. We talked about them a little bit earlier because Spelljammer. They generally have a bit of a halo around them, giving away their celestial nature, though it seems like they don't include it on the mini here. The Rhaegar love art. They just love it. And the best form of art is wanton carnage and warfare. That and interpretive dance. They travel around the universe looking to create as much beautiful art as possible. A Rhaegar has a CR of eight. Speaking of great names, let me introduce you to Grimzod Garganhale. Reminds me of Zaphod Beeblebrox. Grimzod is a potential ally and companion for the PCs in their adventures. Okay, spoiler alert here for this character, so feel free to skip ahead to another fantastic gift mini if you like. Three, two, one. Grimzod is a vampire captain, though that Thing-esque severed hand sitting on his shoulder may have given that away. This adventure does not lack for great, amazing NPCs. Here is your promised awesome rare gift mini, the Shock Trooper. Behold his beauty. His stat block comes with a musket attack, a great sword, hand grenades, and the ability to just headbutt fools in the face. Can we get an all gif adventure? Let's make it happen. DMs Guild add-ups, creators, come on, let's get on it. These Shock Troopers soften up enemies from a distance before charging him to finish them off. They have a CR of six. Topola is another potential ally for the PCs. Those little white things on and around her are meant to be birds. She is a mage and she uses a CR6 mage stat block, but she's also a stellar cartographer. The PCs will spend quite a bit of time with her in Act 2 of the adventure, and she can even accompany them after that. She also has an interesting relationship with another character we talked about previously that I'm going to leave you to discover. Now this is a unique looking human mini, and I dig it. Captain Elena Sartell plays a key role very early in the Spelljammer adventure, and her mini is likely to hit your table a couple of times in those early Spelljammer game sessions. And of course, if you want to, you can always use her as a PC mini as well. She uses the CR2 Bandit Captain stat block. Here's our young Solar Dragon. Again, you can compare it with the adult Solar Dragon mini in our video in the eye in the corner of your screen. This one, though, is not modular. Solar dragons are born inside stars. As I've mentioned previously, dragons in D&D are often differentiated by their type of breath weapon, the locations they layer, and the type of treasure they collect. Solar dragons have photonic breath, which deals radiant damage. They collect generic treasure, but are, like me, more motivated by food. And they live in wild space, generally taking a larger region of space as their home as they age, from an asteroid belt as a young little dragon, all the way up to an entire solar system for an ancient solar dragon. This mini has a huge size base with a two-inch circle denoting its large size in its CR9 stat block. Brogue are four-armed giant kin who are somehow less advanced than hill giants. They generally keep to themselves, and the folks who have claimed to have seen one generally do so at gladiatorial arenas where they're often coerced into combat to entertain the masses. They aren't inherently good or evil, but mistrusting and wary of outsiders, and probably justifiably so. 
But if you do manage to befriend one, you've got a pretty strong ally on your side. Also, their skin is described as orange, but the mini here is very clearly more green to me. They have a CR of six. This is very clearly one of the best miniatures in the set, the giant space hamster. Not the miniature giant space hamster that you may be familiar with with Minsk and Boo. No, this is the OG space hamster. They're big, cute, plant-eating rodents who can be trained as mounts and be suburban. At some point, wizards, in their infinite wisdom, took some giant space hamsters, miniaturized them, and made them more intelligent and telepathic. I'm not entirely sure how you'd use this mini, but if someone wants to use that gnome as their PC mini, a giant space hamster only has a CR of one quarter, so letting them use it as a pet won't break your game. You're just never allowed to kill it. And our capstone mini in this set is the Beholder. Certainly a staple in Spelljammer adventures, but oddly not super present in the Spelljammer book set. This is clearly not the happy-go-lucky Sam Malone Beholder Large Luigi from the Rock of Brawl. No, this fella looks like me when my favorite TV show gets canceled. It's definitively one of the angriest, scariest Beholder minis we have, and it's certainly going to be popular on the aftermarket. Beholders have a CR of 13, and that stat block is in the Monster Manual. I hardly know what to say about this set. Of course, if you're planning to play The Light of Xerixis, The Adventure, this set gets you most of the important characters and enemies you're gonna need. Let's see if there's anything really major missing. One thing that feels missing are Gith Yankee minis, but we do have a Gith Yankee Warband set coming very soon to fill that gap. A couple more PC minis may have been nice, especially more Plasmoids, as I feel like they're going to be a really popular choice for Spelljammer players. And actually, a Thrykreen Warband wouldn't be that bad either. We do have some older Thrykreen minis from back in the Storm King's Thunder set of all places, but it's an interesting race that I could see being part of a fun Star Trek-like adventure where you have to establish some form of communication and cooperation with a very alien and species. As far as monsters go, we get most of them. Most of the larger sized enemies are covered in the ship scale sets, which we'll hopefully get our hands on here soon, but a lunar dragon outside of that collector's box would have been really great. I would have mined a space mollymock mini, which is essentially like a space albatross because I like cute things and birds. Uh, maybe some more vampirates, enough to make a small crew at least would have been nice. And I would love to see how they would have handled a space apparition, which is like a space ghost, but not the talk show host variety. Ultimately, though, I really dig this set. I like the Spelljammer setting. I see why everyone was so excited for it. We met up with our good buddy Glenn at Gen Con a couple months ago, and he let us look through his original Spelljammer box set, which was amazing. I just hope that this is not the last we see of Spelljammer for the next few years. If you are looking for more Spelljammer content, I've got some tips for you. First, D&D Beyond has a free four-adventure mini campaign called Spelljammer Academy. It looks like a fun introduction to the setting where you're players and the characters can learn more about the ship combat rules, about spell jamming, and just life on the astral sea. There's also a free spell jammer bestiary of 10 creatures published by wizards and designed by Chris Perkins and Jeremy Crawford. It's called Monstrous Compendium Volume 1, and it has things like the Eldritch Lich, uh, the Phantom Zone-like Fracteen, and the so-called Goon Balloon, and more. You definitely need to pick this set up, and WizKids, uh, by the way, for listening, these would make some pretty great minis. I don't know if you're listening. We'll also have a link to that compendium and all these other things down below the video here. Also, I'm biased, obviously, but my own adventure, I Am Your World, I think is a great introduction to Spelljammer. It transports your average tier two adventuring party from their humdrum lives of camping in the woods up into a proto Spelljammer adventure featuring Mind Flayers and Naogi and Umber Hulks and a setting which I am not gonna spoil for you, but is a great jumping off point for a full Spelljammer campaign. The link to that is down below too. And you're the first folks to hear about this, but we have a big unannounced space project coming up soon, which will feature modular starships and combat rules. Some really exciting stuff. You can sign up for our mailing list to be the first ones to hear about it. Just visit gallantgoblin.com to sign up for that. 
And this isn't the end of our Spelljammer coverage from WizKids. We still have all the ship scale boxes and the showdown setting box, which features more Astro Elf minis, a map and terrain features. We'll get all those reviews to you as soon as we get our hands on the actual products. Let me know what you think about the Spelljammer minis in the comment section down below. They are releasing in the standard booster box system. If you want to learn more about how booster boxes work, we have a full explainer on our website at gallantgoblin.com. You can sign up for our newsletter while you're there. I still have two full set reviews to catch up on, including Pathfinder Battles Bestiary Unleashed and Icons of the Realms Monsters of the Multiverse. A lot happened while I was away. Be sure you're subscribed to our channel here so you don't miss those. If you want to help me out, go support our sponsors by using our link below the video here. Use the code GALLANTGOBLIN at describe.com. Sign up for the Big Bad series from our friends at Hitpoint Press and pick yourself up the GM or the player companion box from Dragon Shield and let them know we sent you. We're the Gallant Goblin. Tell them that. You can come chat with us on Discord. You can also see the work of some amazing mini painters there who are members of our little community and you can share your own work there too. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For now though, please stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>